favorite scary movie. But sometimes, that is better. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. Welcome to another episode of 13th and Elm. I am Bill, joined here with Michael and Rob. How's it going, guys? Hey, I'm doing great, buddy. This week we watched the 2009 cult classic, The Human Centipede, first sequence. Did you guys know about this? Yeah, I've... Uh... I'm aware of this film. <laughs> yeah, that's what you're asking. I've this actually is... seen this one before, the, before, before our viewing for this. I have I have as well. It's crazy how that worked out. We had no idea. So this was a group idea to watch this movie. We figured it'd be what group? I mean it's a fun this this one. No. Our group. I don't this the three. Maybe you just the involved. two of you? No, you were involved. Well this is a this is a must watch. Agreed. In in Michael and I's opinion and we realized Rob hasn't seen it and we thought I would I've seen it now. Yeah, we'll get we'll, we'll get, get there. there. We'll get there. Um, everybody in the horror community knows about this movie, right? Um, it's low budget. Most of the most of the actors, cast, and crew. It's pretty much like their first big movie. But we will say, so this is directed by Tom Six, who started the Big Brother, the Dutch version, which was the first, which I thought was really cool. I'm a huge Big Brother fan. If you're watching this season. Let's go, Kai. Let's get him to the finish. Yeah, big Soviet Union fan here. <laughs> anyway, so this features the only real person in this movie is Theodor Laser, who plays the main surgeon. And he, German actor, has a decent amount of movies under his belt. Everybody else, not really. Right? Yeah. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, Dieter Laser actually has like a five he's, decade career. He yeah. Started, uh, he's been in several like Belgian and Austrian yeah. television series. He's been in films. Uh, he's actually a semi recognizable face uh, in his yeah. own country. Um, 65 actor credits. Um, and he actually passed away last year, which I did not know. I saw um, that. Yeah. yeah. Do you know how? I do not know how, no, but I did see that uh, he had passed last year. Yeah, so we are watching this in his memory. Sure. I'm, that's a great name, not going to lie, Dieter Laser. That's a great name. It sounds, great. Like a, it sounds like a villain's name. Well, or like a Bond villain. Yeah, exactly. Right? Like not even trying to be like coy about it. <laughs> no, Herr Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> yes, like, totally. He would have been a great Bond villain. He was a great villain. We'll get to it. He's we'll great. Yeah, it. he was. No, he was awesome. Um, one hundred percent medically accurate. Right. We see this on the cover, and yeah, well, yeah they flashed that phrase. <laughs> I don't know if it's accurate, but they definitely so Tom, claimed it to be accurate. Tom Six did talk to surgeons about it. Obviously, that's not true. But from talking to surgeons, he's like, "I'm going to put this on the cover," which I think is great. What, just like in general? Like, yeah. how are you doing? What's your David like? How are you doing? He definitely didn't talk to them about medical procedure because this movie is not medically accurate. No, it's not. But what I mean, you know he was. About that? Oh, just like basic physiology and like biology 101 mostly. Hmm. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. <laughs> so he was inspired by Sal Lowe and Takashi Miike to. So you know it's going to be a good one. Two of the best. <laughs> What? <laughs> Come on. Oh, nothing. We'll get to so, it. Rob's got to speak up on this. You got to speak up. And I did read that um, the idea for this film came from him 
at lunch with some buddies, and he was kind of making a joke about how um, child molesters should be punished. And it was like, what a great punishment for a child molester if he was attached to the butthole of like a fat, dirty man. Um, and then boom, the idea was kind of there. And, and when he was getting financing, he had to finagle. He, I heard he, he lied and, and downsold the plot to get money, which doesn't make any sense to me. No, it makes some sense. If I had a lot of money and some guy was like, I want to make a movie where we attach three people and they like all shit through the same system and shit, I'd be like, here it is. I'm a blank check. I think that says more about crazy. you as a person than yeah. about the ability to have films made. I mean, this is a personal fantasy of mine, I would yeah. say, you in a way. You want to be sewn We're, up or you want to do a sewing? Or just he wants to fund Doesn't a movie. Doesn't matter. Either, fund, either, I mean, either or. Yeah. Which I did see a lot of reviews saying how this movie was so sick and twisted. It's just a fetish film for six peop- sick people. <laughs> six people? Tom six people. Tom six people. And who are you to... F- to you know the fetish shame, kink shame. Like, yeah, how dare you? Which is kind of fucked up. This is consensual, as in the actors. <laughs> if you want, <laughs> as in the actors agreed to be in the film. I'm saying if you want to jerk off to this movie, it, go ahead. I think that's fair. Right. So thank you, Bill, for assuring the audience that this is not a snuff film. This was actually real actors that were paid money and agreed to be in this. Listen, if you're if you're watching this and you feel bad because you're getting horny, it's don't, fake. Don't feel bad. Don't, don't feel, feel bad. bad. Embellish. Yeah. Toss off. Yeah. Toss off. Go buy three dogs from a animal shelter and sew them together. Three dogs. So I don't. That's pretty much all the background I had. <laughs> Let's jump right into it. All right, go ahead. Lead us. I off. love th- fucking three dog. Okay, I'm so how, fucking how, three yeah. Dogs. So I want to say first of all, this was like probably the fourth ish time I've seen this movie. Jesus and Christ! And I was, <laughs> I was one hundred percent sure that the very beginning of him in his car with his picture, he's jerking off. And this viewing was the first time. I was like, oh, I think he's just crying. The heart wants what the heart wants. You and know, I was you wanted to really, see him jerking off and crying. I was really dogs. disappointed in that because I thought he was jerking. He pulled over to jerk off to that picture of the triple dog. As one does. The picture is so fucking funny. When did this film come out? 2004. 2009. Okay. Nine. So Nine. this is prime for a remake, Bill. If you want to remake this in your image, I think you, you ha- could You do actually it. have three cats. You have do three have three cats. cats. I don't know if they'll be a you ha- match. I think you have a penis You've and two hands. You've already taken Tony's teeth out. And a camera. And a car. Tony's teeth are already out. I might have to be in between the two cats to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> you just need some extra cat patellas. <laughs> you sign up to be the middle? You are depraved. Says who? You sign up. <laughs> <laughs> that's how. That's how it works. It's it's like a it's like a high school play. You sign up for the part you want. <laughs> you imagine Bill, to you. Bill running home on break to check the board to see if he got break from what? Ass. Did I make the centipede <laughs> this year? Of course, the annual human centipede play. <laughs> I would love to see that. <laughs> that we do every year. At the, at the every year. Guys, we got we to gotta get it together. <laughs> okay. We got a lot of content so, to cover. There's a lot of plot to cover. Bring it together. I don't know about that. There's so much plot. Um, which starts with? The three dog. The three my dog. S- my sweet three dog. So we see, three dog night. we see Laser in his car. Mama told me not to come. Maybe crying, maybe jerking it. Use your imagination. Definitely just crying. And he's looking at a photo of the three dog, which... Is just so obviously the same dog photoshopped behind its own <laughs> <laughs> that it looks so goddamn funny. Like, you know what? A, what? Okay, I know what this one was about. But when I first like, why does he have do- pictures of dogs sniffing each other's butts? <laughs> like, this is what it looked like to me. <laughs> it's not, exactly what it looks like. Because I'm not a depraved like. like like sociopath. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so he he plays a surgeon, um, laser does, who specialized in separating can join twins right and now he wants he's retired and he wants to do that opposite can we talk about his name Dieter laser no the Dr. character Heiter. Name. oh yeah so joseph heiter yeah, yeah so it's very much a nazi germany experimental th- shit it like that's on purpose joseph mangale yep. and adolf hitler mixed together, mixed together and you drop the l so it's not too on the nose exactly <laughs> and his fucking smock that he's wearing 
that's like taken in at the fucking waist. Mm-hmm. He looks like he's about to send Mike TV through the air in Willy Wonka's factory. He <laughs> looks insane. It's not even like a historically accurate surgeon's uniform. It's a nonsense uniform that buttons up the center. It's calf length. It's all white. It's tailored. What the fuck is this shit? He's Sexy a, cra- he's the word a crazy for. rich ex surgeon. Oh, he's clearly not- rich because he has an entire like triage facility in his basement. Yeah, his house is fucking his tight. House is tight. He has a he has a he has a basement level um, uh, swimming pool. Yep. Yeah. 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 He's got a house Do full you know of fine art. Search, which um, laser painted himself. The paintings that we see inside Shut the house. Up. Yeah. Wow. Like in he should have uh, not IRL. been an actor and just been a painter. IRL. I read that. Yeah. Dude, I would buy some of those paintings. I'm not even like being funny. I absolutely would. Mm, the I would big not. one behind the sofa behind the in the opening scene is, is sick. The conjoined twin. Yes. Yeah. That probably took twice as long to make than the movie did. I cannot wait for you to let us know how you feel about this movie, Rob. <laughs> oh, you're getting some vibes. <laughs> so anyway, we have two American girls that are in Germany, and they want to go clubbing. And they get directions, and they're heading there, and their tire pops. Yes. And I don't know where they're staying. Germany. (laughs) And then they're going to Poland, and they were in Italy earlier. (laughs) Cities are not important, Bill. This is only countries. I just don't understand where they're staying that they have to drive through that forest to get to a club. They don't know where they're going, Jenna. Oh, my God. I thought you knew where we were going. You looked at the map. This movie, okay, this intro scene, the intro scene, the first 15 minutes of the movie before like things start happening and they show up at Dieter Laser's house. Yeah. This is like mm, mid-grade pornography level acting. Yes. It's You are being way too kind. Oh, I'm being far too kind. You really are. As it's, a fan of this movie, it's the opening 15 terrible. minutes is some of the worst line delivery I've ever experienced. Yeah. And I will I have actually a lot to say on that and we'll get to it. Okay. Not only that, these 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 girls are obviously you know well to do. They're able to like rent a nice vehicle. Yeah, they're, I mean they're right, going on a tour of Europe, right? Which yeah, is why are. you would stay at a hostel in some small out of the town nowhere place. You got to drive twenty five miles to get to any club instead of staying in you know Hamburg or Munich or, yeah. or Berlin, a place with other people. Right? No, you got to stay somewhere where you got to call out to find the way to the club. The directions, yeah. If we're gonna dissect logic in this film, we're not gonna make it through the first act. Um, that is true. Did you like the creepy, horny German man who stops on the road? I didn't hate him. <laughs> yeah, I think that I agree with Bill. <laughs> I think that's super fair. I didn't hate him. I did like the scene where she goes through the uh, uh, the glove box German to English dictionary. He said "fuck." Oh my god, he said "fuck." He rolled the window up. Yeah, freaking. Yeah, freaking. That, that was yeah. good. Um. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, if you want to talk about logic, it's like, if you're stuck in the middle of a forest in Germany, you drive on that fucking thing. Like, it's still going to drive. You're going to fuck your tire up, but get out of the woods. It's not her tire. You drive through the forest? They can still continue driving after the tire pops, is what I mean. Actually, I forgot about this, but you reminded me. Do you want to change a tire, Jenna? Oh, my God, no. Of course not. They're They're women. They're women in a horror film. (laughs) They're women. Wow. (laughs) They're women in a horror movie. Right. Um, never changed it. Never, never put a donut on in their life. Probably call their dads out to pump their gas. Jeez, Rob. Whoa. I didn't write these characters. I'm critiquing them. <laughs> Fair. So anyway, they, they walk around in the woods for help, as you do. Right, right. After the creepy old man drives off, they then run through they the get woods out of their car. <laughs> blindly for an hour in the rain. And they find Laser's house. And they eventually find Laser's house, even though Jenna refuses to go a step further. <laughs> I'm staying right here in the rain in the forest. And when she says that, they're 20 feet away. <laughs> they can see the lights from the back porch. <laughs> Clearly, there's a neighborhood or just a single house. I'm not really sure. Yeah. In the it definitely middle a single of nowhere. House. Although... They, he does have neighbors, apparently. I mean, he they he answers the door, and he looks like he's about to eat them on the porch step. He's <laughs> he is like salivating at these women. I mean, he's terrifying looking. Um, he does great a, cast. He honestly. does. He is great, and I know he, that Rob's gonna shit all over him. I will. He he did an outstanding job. He, he looks, carried this he entire was movie. He definitely yeah. Without him, this yeah, it, it just would have been shit. He was great. I mean, we'll get into it. Um, he looks, I actually had to look this up. He looks like the actor who plays Joseph uh, Goebbels in the um, 
uh, Inglorious Bastards film. <laughs> right? Doesn't he kind of look like that guy? I guess, yeah. A little, a little, it's yeah, not a little far bit. off. He's got his hair pulled back. He's got yeah. like the most angular face you could possibly have. Yeah. And uh, just sunken deep He's like cheeks. Gaunt and like yes, uh, gaunt. Super like overly tan. He looks like he was he was imprisoned at the Chateau de If with uh, Count de Monte Cristo. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. That was good. Yeah, you like that one? I did like that. <laughs> uh. Anyway, so, okay, so... So he's terrifying, and he immediately he invites them in, addressing if they're alone. Yeah, that was, like, Normal the question. first, like, are you alone? It's the first thing he says, I believe, yeah. And they're like, yeah, of course, we're alone. Instead of being, like, oh, our fucking huge boyfriends are waiting for us in the car. Which is what you should say. Which is what you should say. Especially yeah, in that's country. why they sent us out to go knock on random yeah, doors. Yeah, they're huge boyfriends <laughs> to be sitting in the car. They're yeah. scared to... Yeah. Also... This guy looks like if Kenneth Copeland and Clint Eastwood had a baby together. <laughs> <laughs> right? How many more? How long did you, you think got? about that? Oh, I got a lot. I got like, at least two more. <laughs> he does look like Kenneth Copeland, kind of. Like, just in Terrifying. The- yeah. Evil eyes. Dude, and that's why I'm Sunken saying face. super good cast because, like, he is terrifying. And, like, if you've ever seen Kenneth Copeland and you haven't like, been afraid, this is not the podcast he looks, for he, you. He looks like a Nazi surgeon. And they're like, let's find a guy who looks like a Nazi surgeon. You know, I think that's, this yeah, guy. that's what they were going for. <laughs> that's exactly what oh, they're going for. Sure. <laughs> okay, so this movie, I'm going to have to, like, just interject with some of my opinion but on his the bad bu- his, his really bad dye job oh god his hair his hair his yeah, hair, yeah he did have a bad dye job but let's let's talk about the plot for those of our listeners who haven't seen this film or are only vaguely familiar with it uh you probably have all the plot that you need but we'll just recap it really quick the uh, girls who are broken down on the side of the road stumble upon the house they find the uh, dr Hyder who is the German Nazi surgeon, as we have referred to him previously, played by Dieter Leiter, or Dieter Laser. And uh, he's got the most horribly ghastly, uh, angular, sunken-in face. And these girls, they re- don't really have any other option but to pursue like uh, the opportunity to get a telephone to make a call to the rental company. And um, so even though he's been super creepy and he looks like death incarnate, <laughs> they accept the invitation into his home. Um We'll speed it up because, you know, there's not a lot of backbone to this movie. No. We're all m- progressing to the climax. And so he, he drugs the girls. He he pretends to call, right, in the kitchen. Yeah. He's, like, he's like speaking loudly out into the ether, but, but he hasn't picked up the phone. And then he gets his um, alky roofies that he puts into the water, mm-hmm. which then fizz up and then tastes like nothing, yeah. and um, <laughs> which, uh, w- which affects him immediately. Yeah, it's like the scene in... Um, Princess Bride. It's tasteless, scentless, odorless, and it oh, just instantly. Oh, it's, it's yeah. No, you're you're right. It is iocane powder. Yeah, That's yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, one of them becomes Which comes Im- from Im- Australia and immediately falls asleep. The other one, it takes a few more seconds for of dialogue to pass before she starts. Well, because she, well, she spills, she spills her, her drink. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's so right. She doesn't have as much. And he does water, water, yeah. and he shows he shows his true self upon the spilling right because he's talking he, about how he didn't call them and he's gonna whatever do yeah, horrible well, he, things yeah he screams he screams he yells well, um, also by this time homegirl's already said the first girl i think jenna jenny has said that she's tired um and like the drugs have taken effect clearly oh. more than enough of a dose in this uh glass of water that like even though she only had a couple sips he was confident enough to just start i mean that thing was the size of a mega sweet tart it was huge dude he's like it's a big thing oh yeah he actually says it's from hypnol he yeah. says it's well, from hypnol he says the rape the drug. rape drug cuz she goes i'm sleepy and she's like what's wrong with you and he goes oh the rape drug like he doesn't avail oh, yeah. that at all um and really this is kind of the first sign of just like absolute things are awry yeah yeah like i mean this is not gonna go well for them but honestly you can say what you want and i know you will but this movie is kind of a slow burn it's about a solid 45 minutes before any blood is shed or anything real startling happens there's a lot of tension Mm -hmm. there's a lot of psychology and like you can totally dismiss it and just call it a shock film and a gore film and all these things and i have a I can't wait to present my argument to say that it's in fact not those things. No, no, I, I agree with you. It's it's very slow and boring and uh, doesn't live up to the hype for the first 45 minutes of the movie. And then at minute 55, you finally get into like what the movie's about. 
And even then, it's more of like a hypothetical theoretical discussion of what's going to happen so that they can then show about two to five seconds of scalpel and then boom, everything's done. Really? Yeah. So he drugs the girls. He takes them downstairs into his little basement triage where there is a... Uh, no, this is a full-scale medical, medical facility. This is not... Yeah. I mean, basement triage makes you think of like some sort of, like I don't know, back alley home style kind of thing. It's legit. This is a white wall, sterile environment. He's got top-of-the-line life support systems, and he can operate on three people simultaneously alone. Well, he is like the Medically world's accurate. premier surgeon specializing accurate. specializing in the separating of Siamese twins, mm-hmm. conjoined twins. I Which he did solo. He did solo all those 14-hour surgeries. We don't know the time that it took. Do you want me to Google conjoined twin separation surgery right now? That's not what he was doing in the movie. Okay. He was anyway. he was conjoining them. We go it's, it's faster if you do it the other way. <laughs> we go downstairs and we find a, a third party down there um, who was a the truck driver from, from the beginning, the beginning, of, the beginning of the movie. Mm-hmm. We skip over that. It's not very He's taking a big shit. Important. He gets he gets drugged. And he gets shot by a trank dart. Opportunity. He's yeah. uh, he's on the side of the road jerking it to his but dog. Yeah, when you see someone pulled over in their sedan, you immediately park your semi truck there and then take a shit. We figure he's too busy jerking off to his three dogs. He's not going to notice you take yeah, a he, shit. Yeah, he, he's in the semi-truck. You can see the guy jerking off to his three dogs. He's like, that guy's busy. I'll go take a shit. Wave the road. Sway the road, bubs. <laughs> anyway, so um, we figure out that this gentleman is not of the same tissue type, which I don't like. I, I am not a surgeon, but like he doesn't share the same tissue type. Are you familiar with blood types? Does he say yeah, tissue I mean, type? <laughs> are you familiar with that as a thing of like transplants? <laughs> and uh, Sure, but like. Is, are you really that worried? Does that work with mouth to ass? What? No, no. I mean, if you want an organ transplant, you have to be the same blood type, they right? Didn't, like, or- they didn't transplant accurate. organs. Okay, you fucking idiots. <laughs> if you're going to give somebody a hand transplant or a liver transplant or, or a skin transplant. That happened, yeah, like, we none know of these that. that happened. You're nope. failing to look at this logically. You're right. It's if all that's happening is butt flaps sewn to cheek flaps. And you're sharing what? circulatory systems and nerves. You don't need your blood head to match, clearly. So he kills him for no reason. And well, he doesn't know. I don't know that they share circulatory or respiratory systems. Circulatory systems. They, I don't know that that's shared either. Right, Only doesn't he have to connect the, the, the circulatory system from the, the, the cheek to the anus? And that's why he has the patellas to like reinforce that area as well? He removes the patella so they can't stand up. Well, although they still use their knees through the whole movie. Well, they didn't stand up. No. It's 100% medically accurate. I don't think you're getting that. You know what? You guys are both right. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you. So I'll continue. Thank you. Um, anyway, so this uh, he kills the third member of the party. And yes. then he returns For back. For no reason. After, no. <laughs> He's not a match. <laughs> I saw some sympathy in that kill, too, that I made a note of. He did not seem to really enjoy it. Yeah, it's like... He kind of injected the shit into his IV. It was a super humane kill. It wasn't And then he covers, he even covers up. Right. He covers him up with a sheet. I thought that was kind of interesting. It's like when I, uh, I'm like mad that I have to throw out five eggs because they're old. Well, definitely. You cover him with a sheet. He's not... Like they stink. <laughs> I don't know if you guys got this, but like it's evident he's a good guy. not a malicious character. He's not here to kill. He what he's really no. doing is he's geared to he's far create worse. life. Like he wants to give life to the human centipede. I mean, we can go on the ins and outs of the philosophical idiocy of this entire film and his entire idea of connecting people together. And which honest- which clearly would die of sepsis, which I knew was going to happen, and then did happen. I mean, it's 100% accurate. Why would it not happen? I mean, oh my God, you have a giant bunch of mouse scars. We're going to push a bunch of fecal shit through that from another person. Yeah, you'll be fine. So, Well, you would think like the middle section would act as like a filter. No, so, like, <laughs> I don't. Maybe you would. I don't think that. So anyway, um, he kills the trucker and then brings in a third. Right. Um, which, where did he come from? You don't know. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. He got the same. He got oh, oh, that, that's right. The, the, it he got l- tranked. It literally is not important. They literally just find not him. Important. He finds him. Doesn't matter. I mean, did you want this movie to be longer? 
No, in fact, <laughs> this movie was already an hour too long. <laughs> <laughs> Man. I'm Tough not crowd. I, I don't like this movie, but I, I, I legitimately, no, non joking, I think this would have been better as a short film, as somewhere between about 35 to 45 minutes. Because all of, the, all of the preamble, uh, not only is it unnecessary, it's boring. It's literally boring. I don't care about the dogs. I don't care about the trucker. I don't, and, 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 and even they recognize it because they get another guy out of nowhere in like minute 40 or minute 50. That there's no that there's no reason or where he's from. It's not important. Let's just get yeah. to the surgery and them dying of sepsis. Let's do that. <laughs> and I'll watch enough. thirty minutes of that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Okay. I'm gonna jump in because I do really agree with this. Actually, you're making right. some really good points, and you are right. Because, okay. So I, <laughs> I feel bad, but I also I don't. It's called a fucking human centipede. This Nazi fucking surgeon sews mouth to ass three people together, and mm-hmm. like that's the fucking movie. There's not much else to it. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Spoiler alert. So that being said, let's talk about some of the things within that. And the, what I would say is that this movie gets no more intense or unsettling than in its title and its concept mm-hmm. because it, it it lacks bl- bl- there's not much blood there's no. n- next to zero gore in this film it is is not a shocking film i think as far as the things that I, it there are more scenes of a pool than there are of blood and gore in this absolutely. film absolutely many more scenes um this is not something that deserves its hype as like being one of these great like is it an exploitation film Absolutely. But is it one of these crazy, gross-out, over-the-top, world's most shocking, needs-to-be-banned films? Not remotely. I honestly think that outside of its concept and outside of the name and just the overall idea of it, the film is pretty tame and pretty boring. I agree with that. I, honestly, like we all watch horror movies, creature features, right? The most of creature features, with some exceptions, it's scariest before you see the monster, right? Because right. your idea of the monster is far worse than anything they could show on screen. And that's what this film is. The concept of it, and, and I'd never seen this film because I thought it was going to be a gross, super gore, nasty flick. Right. And I, I built it up as this thing in my brain, and then we watched it, and I was like, that's it? Yeah. See, yeah, I feel, I feel like I, that is... I feel lied to. That's a pretty Wait till you see the popular. second one. Well, second one's is let one me know period, when you choose it for the pod so and this, then I'll watch it. I see this movie as kind of an introduction to extreme horror. And I mean that as in if you – and I saw a lot of reviews like this. I didn't think there would be people like this out there. But I saw a lot of reviews that are like, this is disgusting. This is sick. I can't believe someone thought of that. And then there's a lot of people, like like you said, like, it was like, oh, like I was expecting some like way more gore, way more twisted. So if you are thinking about getting into the more extreme stuff, I think you watch this. And if at yeah. the end you're like, wow, this was bad. lame. I wanted a lot more. But if you. Then you're ready for Mike. You're ready dude, for Gaspar yeah. Noe. I, but if you end and you're like, that was disgusting. Like, I don't know how, like why. Would you want to watch that? There's no plot, blah, blah, blah. Because, I mean, in extreme horror, most of that stuff is not going to be very plot heavy. No. No, so, absolutely. This I, one, it was definitely, like, if you want to talk about gore, I think, you know, you're, so you say, like, terrifying before you see the monster and these creature features. I think also, like, you look at any of these popular, like, even your casual horror fans or, like, people who might not even call themselves horror fans, but maybe they're in a relationship with somebody or they're friends with somebody who's a horror fan and has made them watch movies like Saw or Evil Dead. Like, these are way more graphic and gory films than oh, Steven yeah. Centipede. Most werewolf transformations are more gory and brutal than this, and I hate that we go to werewolf, trans- werewolf transformations in most of these pods. But <laughs> realistically, like like that Hellraiser, Hellraiser is way more graphic more gory than, than this, this film. Yes. And also like really fucked up on its own basis. It's, um, no, it's the subject matter. It, it is. And having not seen this film and built in it up in my brain and also Bill having chosen it and you're probably the biggest score hound of the three of us. Um, maybe it's neck and neck depending on the day of the week <laughs> with you and Michael, but less so than Certainly myself. Certainly not you. 
Yeah, less so than myself. That I, I, I don't know. I just, I was expecting to be like not turning away where I'm like I can't watch this kind of yeah. stuff because I'm a big boy. I mean, I would. <laughs> but I mean, I would have loved the actual surgery scenes. I mean, if we got. I to wanted see to see like shit s- coming out of their fucking mouth or like like wounds and like you and me both blood yeah, so and like I and I want to see like patella stitched into their faces and like yeah. fucked up shit. And I think that that's yeah. one of my biggest criticisms of this film, honestly. And I actually have a lot of positive things to say about this film. None of it's going to be in the plot. None of it's going to be in the acting. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, actually, I'll take that back. Dieter Laser is a, a awesome. stud oh. in this movie. Also, I, I know I mentioned that he looks like Kenneth Copeland and Clint Eastwood, but what does else? he also not look like Ray Liotta? <laughs> <laughs> Especially with yeah, at like the end with the like yellow filters all over everything. Post blow Ray Liotta. Yeah, Lota, yeah, like, like he's Lota. in a speedo and like screaming at the camera. I love it. Yeah, that is not. I don't know if I see that one. I do. No. Okay, I you should. <laughs> um, <laughs> he's so kind of jowly. One of my. I love Ray Liotta. He's like one of my favorite actors. I really? See it. Yeah. Huh. One of my big. So my biggest actually uh, issue with this film is that a movie called The Human Cid- Centipede needs to be fucking disgusting. Disgusting. It needs to be yeah. unsettling. It needs to be completely ghastly and uh, and start to finish. And um, this film kind of had moments of pretension. It had like some sort of like I don't want to say twist ending because it's I mean there's only so many ways it can go and this was definitely one of the ones that you would see. But it kind of had like a almost like this art house type of feel to its final sequence. And I yeah. feel like that's completely unnecessary because you need to be overindulgent in the fact that you are, I mean, we call this extreme horror. They call it torture porn. They yeah. call it like this Boring. genre. Uh, yeah. This genre is not known for, you know, being nuanced. And, um, I just, I don't, I don't think that this film delivers what it promises. Mm-hmm. And I do agree with you when you say that it's kind of like the baby step to extreme horror. This is yeah. like binky horror to me. Yeah. Okay. Did and you- I mean, part of that probably was, I mean, I didn't find a number, a number on the budget, but I mean, it was low budget and he, it already- wasn't terribly low budget though, compared to like a lot of films within the yeah. genre. Like honestly, and this is one thing I do want to say, sorry to cut you off, but like this film had <laughs> fuck you. Rob, because I yeah, just let me get this out and then you can roast me all you want because I know it's coming. <laughs> this film had incredible cinematography and outstanding production. Okay, the acting is shit. The story is shit. Right. Like, okay, so one of my criticisms is like one of the like the acting of the two girls is so bad that it got better around fifty five minutes when their mouths were literally shown to a asshole of an Asian man in front of them when they couldn't talk and all of their like acting relied on their eyes and their hand movements, the little gestures, like holding hands, like they were able to express more than they ever did when their mouths were open. Okay, sure. This movie is not great, but that opening sequence reminded me a lot of, um, funny games like the overhead of oh the yeah and yeah, and the, on yeah the, road. the big sweep sweeping shots and like the constant movement of the camera the way that they pre- like present the house as being like isolated and choked off you get a lot of these narrow hallway shots that really like creates a claustrophobia and a sense mm-hmm. of urgency to need to escape the big window in the bedroom that is like such a frail barrier between you and freedom but like what can you do to escape it when you are a part of the human in that position feet. exactly like there's a lot of this movie that i genuine like the the pool enclosure you know like there is a lot of good cinematography and every frame of this movie is filled with something interesting to look at and something like engaging for the audience between the house and like all of the swatch of colors and the art in the background like this definitely creates a certain sense even like you mentioned it yourself like you go down into this pristine sterile environment this whole nasty like or not nasty in fact it's not nasty this very clean medical room in his basement like there is an eeriness there is a uh, claustrophobia and there is a sense of urgency that's all created in my opinion through the camera techniques and through what is on frame now it's unfortunate that everything else fell significantly short and i don't know how they procured the talent to create such an effect because it certainly wasn't off of the plot and as you said he even dumbed it down when he was pitching it Mm -hmm. but like this film didn't look 
like a low budget. No, film. we've watched low budget horror films. I would even argue that Starry Eyes, which is a film that's very good, looked worse than this. This was clean, and this had good camera movement. This had great cinematography. I'm not fucking joking around when I say this. I really think that they nailed it in sense of that. I agree with that. Go ahead. You ready for a battle? Oh, I'm always so oh good. Okay, so I think that you are correct in some sense that the only redeeming factor of this film is the camera angles. And I don't think that using blue filters for two-thirds of a film and red filters for the last third of the film <laughs> is an excuse for good cinematography. And the lack of <laughs> their shooting locations and having to do it all in an underground pool also does not make up for everything else in the film. Yes, I also agree that the less that the female actors talked, the better the film was, and that most of their acting, when everything was voiced, was terrible. Uh, in addition to the almost stereotypical angry Japanese man that they just find out of nowhere and then decide to like sew up, I and, mean, and the weird like each knee like kind of I, that means one two. I'm aware. <laughs> Let me just say, you I did not. It. I did not like this film. <laughs> I did not like this film. I did not expect myself to like this film going into it. And I tried very hard to not let that color my perception of this film like so many blue gels. Well, you failed there, I'm sure. But also, just out of curiosity, did you like the film more or less than you thought you would? Um, Because it was quite different than you expected, right? Far less, actually. Because I expected... We probably hyped it up a little bit, too. Not really. Like, I know that... (laughs) I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, yeah. like, I know that you're a fan because you said that you'd seen it more than one time. And, yeah. and you had seen it as well, and you had not. You'd, okay, here's Let's how I know that, the, that you like the film is you don't shit all over it. <laughs> if you don't shit all over it, then maybe you actually like the film. Like I'm a, so you hadn't is that s- how I am? N- no, that's how I perceive you, um, <laughs> which is different than how you are. But, <laughs> but I, I expected this film to be, again, like way more gory. And yeah. we get to minute 55, and he's describing the procedure. I'm like... Fucking how much longer is this goddamn film? And then we get into Luckily, it. Luckily, only about 30 minutes. Luckily, though. only yeah. about another 40 minutes, which was still far too long. And we get into it, and then I'm like, what What am I missing? Like, what, Like it's a bunch of chase scenes through a nonsense labyrinthian house that he owns. So you agree that the... Uh the house scene appears kind of like a labyrinth. Like, I, I there's would, no I escape. Would say that kind of it, like the cinematography that, painted that well. No, no, no. More <laughs> that it, in sort of a house plan, MC Escher, it makes no sense, and that the audience is not expected to keep track of where the hallways are and which rooms are connected to which doors. You know what the audience is also not supposed to keep track of, real quick, is uh, so like there's a good scene towards the end where they like really struggle to get up the stairs. Right? Oh yeah. But like also, mm. we've seen multiple scenes where they're like outside in the lawn. Yep. Which, either he has, like, an elevator or, like, a ramp or, like, an ulterior exit that they could have used. Right. Which, so I don't know why they didn't use that. Or... Or it was boring and they cut that part out. Or they had to... They already have mastered how to go up the stairs. Or, possibly, and I'm not willing... I'm not willing yet to rule this out, that they are in a Bermuda Triangle-style area that warps space-time around them. As of so many other films. That is probable, actually. Actually, I, I... it's not really that probable. It's no. More, it's more probable that I they, think they the didn't Nazis invented space time. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if they invented space time. <laughs> no, they I think they did. It. Yeah, space time didn't exist before. Yeah, I think that was one the of uh, that, that was one of Oppenheimer's uh, inventions. Oh yeah, Oppenheimer, the famous Nazi. Yeah, he invented uh, like uh, killing a lot of people and then space time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah his famous quote of "I have become space time." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think of the first poop? Oh, I was waiting for that. I was yeah. kind of waiting for that, so and um, it was still gross and unsettling and yeah. unsatisfying. Yeah, I feel like for a lot of people, that's the worst scene. That's so tame. Also, it's so tame. It's so tame. Man. But you know, you get you know these people. You start talking about eating shit, and they get all turned off. Yeah, yeah I don't get that, but. You know, to each their own. I also I had not seen this film prior to the podcast, so all I could think about was the South Park episode parodying this film. Oh yeah, I figured about that. Because that is more culturally relevant in my mind than human centipede. So I was like, Oh, he's eating vanilla paste, clearly. <laughs> I mean the first poop was solid and I think it would have been was it solid. solid? <laughs> 
<laughs> Jinx. Because uh, they pulled, they took all his teeth, their teeth out, so they definitely couldn't chew any any turds. That's probably for their Best. benefit, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, whatever. It's a simple film. It has a really e- easily digestible plot. And, uh, you know, it was never going to be a vehicle for, like, Oscar Wilde wor- wordplay or anything like that. And I feel like they're... they're Oscar wordplay? Oscar Wilde. Wild. Like, oh, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and I think that this movie, in fact, all of the dialogue fell into, like, one of three categories. German, Japanese, dumb English. <laughs> no, no. Well, yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. But it was either, like, just straight exposition. And it wasn't even, like, a dump at the end. It was just, like, from It the was m- a dump at the end. <laughs> Fair enough. Or it was like, please for help. Just like straight like, help, what are you doing? You're crazy. Stop it. This crazy or, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or or it was just like um, muffled whimpering, which I guess is mm-hmm. what you pantomimed kind of falls into that. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of like, tapping of shoulders, pointing in directions. Yeah, and really that's all of the dialogue in this movie. No, it's not. But if it was all the dialogue, the movie would Most be better. No, that's, I mean, what else? Exposition, please uh, for help, and pantomime. That's it. That's it. There's no like uh, character development. <laughs> sure, that's. I mean, okay. Two words. I'll give it. And to you. all of the stuff that happens with the police officers. That's all in English as well. Yeah, those cops. I'm not arguing English. No, we're talking about dialogue. <laughs> Whatever. All right. So yeah, you're missing the point, and I'm right, and that's okay. Um, there's only <laughs> about. On five characters with speaking roles in this film and like one of them is in Japanese exclusively Mm -hmm. and two of the other uh, five um, literally lose their ability to speak about halfway through the movie Um, which is a massive improvement it really was Um, I don't know I think that overall this wasn't horrible in fact I think it was the only direction to go off the heels of Van Helsing, really. <laughs> and the fact that this yeah. movie was able to spawn two sequels, which is something that Van Helsing can't say, despite laying all of the foundation for That's sequels. Uh, I mean, uh, and this movie also wasn't two and a half hours long. Uh, I <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, Van Helsing did spawn a sequel. It's animated. That doesn't count. That is not the same. I'm just saying. Is it canon? It is canon. And what year did it come out? Uh, I think it was like three years after the original, so probably like 2007. Well, you know, next time... That wasn't time their plan. The next time you get a shitty opportunity to subject us to a vampire film, you can pick that oh, one. <laughs> believe me, we've got one coming up in about two weeks. Oh, God. God damn it. I mean, I mean, my admiration for this movie pretty much stems for somebody having the idea and getting other people to pay for it, honestly. Yeah, that's impressive in itself. Yeah. I agree. Because it's kind of, almost like I look at it and I'm like, fuck, like, how did I not think of that? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm. Yeah. This no, is, it's, it's something like you think of it when you're like really baked at like 2 a.m. and then forget about the, the Yeah, the next I love morning. getting high. And so it's like, what's a way to just torture the shit out of people? We need a guy that looks like a Nazi surgeon that can eat an entire can of peaches, 32 ounces of can so of peaches. That was not peaches. That was can an we entire talk about like that? fruit I, cocktail. No, those were peaches. No, well, there were peaches present, but there was also like maraschino cherries. What? Pear have. That was have at, you ever, just never was seen, at a distance. Have you at never the seen table. a dem- There was not a close up. On the table okay. of his bowl. Clearly, you didn't grow up on food stamps. But I am quite versed in 32 <laughs> ounce cans of Demot fucking fruit cocktail. And I can tell you no, right no, now. No, no, We had M rations in my family, okay? <laughs> sure. Government pork, spam, sometimes fruit. I, MREs. How no, many, what's your favorite not, MRE? <laughs> what, for Christmas? <laughs> Christmas dinner, MREs? It's, look at you, Mr. Fancy Pants. Uh, what's Christmas? Chili, chili bean, chili bean mac is the best one. That is not true. I, the, some of the desserts are actually great. No, I no, wish the, I could the buy meal, them. dessert. What is dessert? What is that? Oh, uh, it's is that some sort of it's extra what meal your parents you get? feed you for breakfast when you grow up a latchkey kid. Oh, well, we only had Fruity vodka and cigarettes. Just, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are a big brother. Uh, yeah, oh, big time, big I time. Don't know any of this? You have never had an MRE? I don't know what that is. Meals, Meals ready, ready to eat. eat. This is sure. wow! Look at this. I thought you were a patriot. Yeah, no, no. He's what? What? Actually, your 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 first name is uh, Rupert Bill the Third, right? Uh, yeah, that, how'd yeah, you know? yeah. You look like a Rupert. You definitely look like a Rupert. You look like a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. 
But no, no, he's eating whatever. He's eating canned fruit of some sort for I also dinner. I don't remember this in his at fancy all. ass he home. This? He it is at the beginning. I think he. I think it's after he drugs the girls before he starts the surgery monologue. And then there's a I later point where he just eats a giant steak. I think I just wrote in all caps. Big, big steak, steak dinner. He doesn't even eat it. He cuts into it and looks at it and is like, He's upset that. by it. Yeah. Big steak dinner. Those big are, that is like, that's like a 16 Can we talk font? about, I want to love, I wrote cute with an exclamation mark next to my notes because I call it wake up day. When the centipede wakes up, he is so proud of himself. And if you, he's wearing a suit. And I just thought, I was like, I wish I could feel that accomplished at some point in my life that he got up in the morning and he knows no one is going to know or see this accomplishment. And he still puts on a suit and he's so happy. I felt yeah. happy for him. Yeah, I really agree right. with that. No, he's got his Hugo Boss Nazi suit and his his, uh, his baton. I think it was Tommy Hilfiger. <laughs> no, Hugo Boss definitely made the the Nazi uniforms. Okay. Is that true? Yes, that's totally true. Just like Toyota made, or Mitsubishi made the, the Zero for the Imperial Japan, Japanese. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter. World War II history, people. It's important. Um, to who? Everyone? <laughs> Most people? Uh, no, he does. He, like, he like brings them out on the lawn? Yeah. And, and it's, okay, so well, uh, again, like you're talking about, they, they multiple times they're in the lawn, <laughs> yes. and they're obviously able to climb up the stairs with no knees. They're not, like, fatigued or exasperated. Or, or, or they, they have like, patellas. <laughs> 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 yeah. Like, they are just out there fine, you know? Yeah, so, I mean, he, I mean, just more admiration for his three dog, right? Because he treats the centipede like a dog. Very I mean, much he, like a dog. He... I mean, the first, I, th- I believe the first time they're out in the yard, he is trying to teach them to bring him the newspaper. Yeah. Yeah. He puts He's the newspaper the in new, the guy's like, mouth. Yeah. Just like super degrading shit. I mean, he, they eat out of a dog bowl. Well, he eats out of a dog bowl. He, yeah. The front the piece. The front. Which we didn't, um, so the middle piece gets away for a second. Um, Right? Well, prior to being the middle piece. Oh, yeah, prior she she does escape. That's why briefly. she's the middle piece. Well, and 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 again, I, that was honestly that was the best part of the film. His explaining w- why. No, 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 her escape and then him being like, "Oh, yeah, you're the middle piece now." Like that was the best part of the film. It's not good, but it's the best part of the film. I did like that. How he was like, "Now, yeah, he's like, what now I, I know." I actually really like the psychology of Doctor uh, Hyder. I think yeah. that his whole gimmick of like treating the centipede as a singular piece of biology instead yeah. of three individuals and the way that he like he loves the he loves the human centipede not quite as much as a three dog but he does love the human centipede now he has no respect or value for any of the three individuals this is a case where the sum is greater than the parts um, he says yeah. <laughs> yeah he would agree he would agree with you the sum is greater than the parts yeah well he duh. says I hate human beings. He does say to that them. before they get like drugged. He's and like, I like, hate humans. <laughs> Do you live here with your wife? They're yeah. all like testing oh, he's him. Trying, out. He's trying. Putting, like, putting fish lines like, so out. So somebody yeah. else is in the house, right? No, I hate human beings. Um, I don't know his whole psychology between like treating him like a dog and getting dressed up, and then him de- like determining who the middle section is going to be because they're yeah. insubordination and like all of that. Like that makes this. He is a terrifying villain. He is a legitimate, solid horror antagonist. Mm. Yeah, when he's got those sunglasses Debatable. on, he's terrifying. He's terrifying. So we were all waiting for the Japanese guy to commit seppuku, right? Like we were all waiting for that to happen. I mean, he he's like he he's like anime level stereotype. He is in the movie to accentuate how Japanese how is. how <laughs> that and and like the racist like Nazi ish. It's it's World War Two. It's Japan and, and Germany him. exactly. Yeah, and, and the he Americans. even he even calls him a kamikaze shithole. Yeah, and he also multiple calls him a Nazi. times. He, and then and he, he calls, calls him, him a Nazi. Nazi multiple times. Yes. So. I also wrote um, American Mary feels all tease no cock because this film gives you the idea that there's a bunch of gore and horrible this things a going on. Cock, is there not? I don't. Uh, it's more of a figure of speech. I don't mean that <laughs> there's actually no cock. It's more that there's no blood and gore. That they have all this idea of like surgery and horrible things, but they don't yeah. show you this in a graphic format. Right. 
I mean, the, I mean, the American last... Mary is much more. There's much more cock in American. There Mary. is much more cock, and yet still not enough, not enough gore and graphic for what she is as an evil surgeon, essentially body modification person. Right, we're gonna watch some fucked up shit. Next well, time. I hope that you don't blue ball me again with. I'll take care of that off. B mic. grade binky ass bullshit. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't know you were ready for the big boy leagues. Oh, let's I've take them there, Mike. Been let's ready go, for the baby. big boy leagues for years, homie. Let's go, August Underground. <laughs> Dude, we are gonna fuck you up with some murder porn. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna Do love it. it. And then we're gonna watch some fucked up horror movies. Good, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the next so, but, film will be a snuff film. But I mean, I feel like I mean the last scene in this movie is relatively gory. Um, oh, when he like dies, sh- he yeah, just like, like shoots shoot himself. And, and, yeah, and and can we talk about the the blood licking, the stair licking? Oh yeah, um, yeah. Because um, that was Laser's idea, um, which is great. Because I'm just imagining him being like, "Hey, how about when he's I'm crawling so up these stairs? Oh, seriously, like, can I lick this I know this that you blood? don't disagree. He's so good. He's great. He did great. Like he was awesome in this movie. Yeah, he. I, it's the reason why this movie is watchable. Dare I say he was born to play that role? There, dare not, you? Literally, I dare. This man has done nothing else in his entire life that has mattered except for this role. Well, nothing that you two have seen. <laughs> 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 Apparently, he's like a big name in Austria or yeah, Germany, no, where he's I, from. No, no, obviously, like obviously name. a kid, but but um, he's like a David Schwimmer. Like the. W- <laughs> Is that the direct comparison <laughs> for American audiences? He's yes. a David Schwimmer of the German media market. Yeah, look at his head. Look at his fucking What head. about his head? It's all lumpy and not. It's not lumpy at all. Ugly. It's perfectly They're square. Pretty, it looks like, like it Schwimmer. looks like a stone in the Machu Picchu. <laughs> like they fucking napped it to fit exactly in the hole. He looks like yeah, Kenneth Theater Copeland and the, the head from Legends of the Hidden Temple. Yes, Olmec. agreed. Yes, I the Olmec like an head. Easter Island head. <laughs> I mean, also that. I mean, also all that. of those things, really. Think of like megalith human anthropomorphic <laughs> sculptures mixed with Kenneth Copeland, Clint Eastwood, and also Ray Liotta. That's what you're getting. Or you can just Google him. You can look him up. His name is Dieter Laser. No, watch the Dieter fucking... fucking Laser. Insane, watch the movie. Insane name. Watch the movie. Don't just Google it. Watch the movie. He yeah, is... Yeah, his well. whole head is, like... It is elevated by the, like, Morpheus fucking very small black sunglasses. Again, he looks like he's sending someone through Wonka Vision. He's wearing insane goggles and a white smock that buttons up the center, and it's tailored. It's nonsense. I Why so can't very a very rich... Man, working on his own, be like, a I want my man. own shit, and it's gonna be fit. It's gonna look tight. <laughs> that is historically that? anachronistic, and it makes no sense. This okay. This movie is a hundred percent medically accurate, not a hundred percent historically. The accurate. buttons on his doctor's smock are conservatively two inches across. Personal choice. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> if you've made your money, you can spend it how you want. I've I'm said that. not unsure that they're actually teacup saucers that he's sewn into his vest to use his butt. He is a renaissance man. I wouldn't be surprised if he sewn that, sewed that whole What do you mean by that when you say, because I know what renaissance man means, <laughs> but I'm not sure what you <laughs> are meaning with that. I mean, he's a man who has cultivated skills that help him. Skills to- plural? Skills. Uh, we know he can sew. Well, we know if that. there's one thing he can <laughs> no, do, he I don't can think sew. we know that. He we never see sew. him sew. He's clearly uh, worth a lot of money. He could pay somebody to tailor this. Wait. He don't, he don't sews we the don't fucking even kn- human centipede. No. He can we shoot. See, okay. That's second skill. Sewing and suturing are two different things. He can shoot. Well, that's that's fair. And besides that, there's staples. So Only on the cheeks after they've been scored to allow for, like, because you got to get in there like swimwear. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you got to get in there like swimwear? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That's where swimwear goes. Have you ever been swimming and you got a little ride? No, because I cut the internet out because I hate the internet. You oh, yeah? The internet? You've never fucking been on Yahoo.com? <laughs> cut out the no. internet? <laughs> yeah. The internet, not the internet. <laughs> you just... <laughs> I cut out the internet. You got a How bathing suit and you this? cut out the internet. <laughs> when you were, were you internet. Like afraid of being exposed? Like, where you, is there something to leak? <laughs> I also... No, I just find it uncomfortable on my testicles. I don't see why that's such a big problem. You have leaky testicles? No, no. They're just very large and they chafe. I also cut out the internets of my bathing suits. See? It's not that weird. Also, that was when I was straight. So now I just wear Speedos. Do you? No, because I haven't gone swimming in a year and a half. 
Okay. Pixar. So I got some fuck. Deshaun bought me some uh, shorts. The podcast is going to love this. Elmer's, this is relevant to you. Listen up. Uh, so we got some shorts for the gym, and he was all proud of them. He's got, because yeah. he says I look like Keanu Reeves, which upsets me. And I what does that even with, mean? Exactly. And so he got me the Keanu Reeves is known for short shorts. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> He says, because these shorts have Keanu Reeves' face on them. Oh, well, and that makes say, way they more say, sense. They say, well, I was getting there before you cut me off. It says, John Thick, and they're like a four-inch oh inseam. Like, I almost wore them today to record, but I didn't want to, you know, make you blush. <laughs> <laughs> you could not make me blush if you tried. Challenge accepted. Also, <laughs> I'm all about that four-inch inseam. Like, show me that tip. <laughs> Uh, it's a four inch sh- inseam, not a two inch inseam. <laughs> so people have to tip out at four? Shit. Some, some, some people do. <laughs> <sighs> anyway. This how about, conversation how about is the ending? Than the movie. The movie? Yeah. The, the ending? ending? What about it? What I was happy. Think? I was happy that it was over. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. Like again, I expected, I expected suicide. I expected them to die of sepsis. So those were ch- check boxes. Yeah, I mean the the pus through the wound, um, the little pimple pop, is the most disturbing part of the movie, in my opinion. That's we know you don't like skin rashes. Yeah, puses. that's one um, of the very few things that kind of. You know what would have been better is if the caboose had died like halfway through and they're <laughs> and just dragging, dragging around. around. And like, also, I thought they were gonna pull each other apart. The two girls that they're gonna pull her mouth away from her anus and rip it apart. And I was so, waiting for that. If you want to see that, check out the sequels. <laughs> uh, you know, I don't want to see that. I was expecting it, and I don't <laughs> have any interest in searching for it. So no. Well, I'm hosting next week. Human centipede. <laughs> well, Pike I Doom. will be in some state forest somewhere west of us. So, well, I'll send my German fucking friend out to make sure your car is good when you break down. Please do that. Viking. <laughs> each knee, each knee. Each so knee, I mean, I like. Knee. I'm a fan of it. The ending's probably my favorite part because um, I'm a big fan of unhappy endings. Everybody dies except for the middle, the middle, middle, and like what? Oh, I'm a two thumbs. All the way up. I mean, she's going to die. Middle? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Or does she? No, no she, she dies. She definitely does. Uh, she does. Because she's getting poop in her mouth. She's got a dead Asian man in front of her. A she dead has 180 woman. pounds on each side of her of human weight that she cannot get away. 180 pounds? Neither of like 130. Yeah, even, maybe. Even if she pulled, like, physically jerked and removed her mouth and her she butt. She bleed out. Yeah, and she well, can't she really stand. She's going to die of sepsis. Yeah, she doesn't have to tell She's going to die of sepsis six patella. hours before the movie ends, so it doesn't actually matter <laughs> what but happens also, at the end. The, uh, She's got a long walk back to a car with a flat tire. With with no knees. I mean, there's dead cops in there. How long does it take to fucking respond to those? Well, apparently you can get a warrant in 20 minutes. So in Germany. I don't you know. You can definitely get a warrant in 20 minutes. But if he lives like at least 20 minutes away from a courthouse. That yeah. was a fallacy. Minim- well, no. F- that was definitely Ten interesting minutes. how... Because he's... Because they're... No, I guess it'd be 40 minutes, right? Because they yeah. get there yeah. 20 minutes, Because they definitely back. left, yeah. got a warrant, and were back in about 25 minutes. That's right. That is correct. So... so they yeah, might have been a, a court... They might have passed a courthouse in those woods. They could have passed... Which... You strange, if you had passed a courthouse in the woods, you'd you go know. to the weird house in the middle of the woods instead of the courthouse. Certainly. Well, fuck, I would, and I don't trust those pigs. Yeah. The fucking pigs. Definitely couldn't stay in that... Uh, in that um, that car all night long. That would not have worked out. Yeah, I love that. Like you know, the safe, lockable car with seats. Or yeah. just like, drive. Or just drive it. I'm sticking with that. Yep. Are you gonna fuck up that wheel? Yes. Are you gonna make it out of the woods? Also, yes. Or they could at least attempt to put a donut on. If you are not getting full coverage insurance on your international rent a car, what are you doing? You deserve you to, to die. die. You deserve to be sewn together via to your friend human and a stranger. Yeah. So. I can say confidently, I have no sympathy for anybody in this film except possibly the no. three dog. The three dog did not deserve to die. The three dog did not deserve to be photoshopped into its own ass. No. Mm. It was. Do you have, feel differently, Rob? I don't really have any opinions on the three dog. I don't really care about the my three dog. sweet three dog. Literally the best part of the movie. Mm. I, I've heard no, that I said think, four think... times about four different parts. Of the movie. <laughs> I feel like the best part of the movie <laughs> was the final the credit. Ending. Was 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 her being sewn together and ending it, and she's clearly gonna die. 
And uh, yeah, that was it. Okay, well, that was it. Then, then I mean, that's the fucking movie. There's not much more to draw on. So no, go ahead and tell us how do you feel. I mean, we can ascertain so much, but mm. give us a rating. How do you feel about this movie, Rob? Mm, I'm happy what? that I made you watch it. Same. You, well, we. It was a team effort. Thank the both of you. Thank you both. You're welcome. It was way better than Van Helsing. <laughs> oh my God! It's so much better I than Van Helsing. Say it's about the same. <laughs> that it means a lot to me coming from you at least. Does it really? Yes, actually it does. Cuz like here's the thing, Van Helsing is so long and so it's way too long to be actually fun. And much like this movie, there's not The acting's just as bad. It, the acting <laughs> is maybe even worse. And it it's it, there's just it's so boring. There's just not enough going on. There's not enough gore, there's not enough there's not enough graphic like I, I, you you hear all this stuff about him describing the surgery and then all of a sudden it's people under a sheet fuck this movie this movie is a two out of ten this movie is bad do not watch this movie i would not rewatch this movie it's disappointing the acting is bad the graphics are bad the cinematography is passable the cinematography is okay the Be score objective. the score is completely forgettable oh completely forgettable Everything that you said, I can't really argue with, except for the cinematography. And you are always this guy who's like, you can't just like pump up the tires because it's a horror movie. You can't just be all emotion. Like, there's got to be a critical element to your critique. And okay, sure, but be consistent. This film had good cinematography. It had passable cinematography. It had good cinematography. Full stop. Mm. Well, agree to disagree. I'm I'm surprised that you are not man enough to admit that actually because I I know <laughs> that that's how you feel. <laughs> <laughs> you heard it first, your Elmers. Uh, Michael knows me so well; he knows me better than I know myself, and <laughs> knows that I actually love this movie. That's not what I said. I refuse no, to give I you guys credit. I said that you Just know that this had good cinematography, mm. above average, passable, above average, passable. Meet me halfway. I don't have like, to do that. No. We can have different opinions. Meet it's me okay. in the middle okay. like Fergie. No, no. I did not like this movie. I regret watching this film. Would you watch this movie in a box? No, or Would with you? a fox, okay. or wi- in your cocks, or socks, or anything else. In no, your cocks? Yeah. <laughs> which, is, which is the next uh, human cock centipede. <laughs> Theater Sewn laser. <laughs> Laser was fucking awesome in this movie. Agreed. He was terrifying. Um, his acting was great. The stuff that he added, like the blood licking and all that stuff, was great. Like I said before, the main reason I like this movie is the pure fact that somebody thought of this and wrote a whole script around it and got money for it. Um Six out of ten. What? Six out of ten. Okay. This. Okay, like wait, wait, said, wait, wait. I agree. You're on a fucking ten scale. I agree now? with your ten scale. S- uh, <laughs> 60, <laughs> Sixty out of a hundred. Michael, um, what's your out of ten score? Yeah, it's pretty much all I got. You know, if it wasn't for the brilliance of Dieter Laser, rest in peace, and the. <laughs> outstanding production and cinematography like this had great production standing this yes this what like you can say what you want but this rivals like some of the kurosaga like seven samurai film <laughs> like this has <laughs> we don't even know who that is so sure why not more fart sniffing cinema 68 out of 100 what 68. Oh, my God. Amen. Okay. For all of our Elmer out there <laughs> that's listening to this right now, please be aware that the aggregate score does not reflect reality. <laughs> Dude. Averaging this out to a 4-5 is embarrassing. You know what? If averaging this out, and uh, sure, you're like blah, 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 blah. Four or five, 45% is actually lower than this has scored on the tomato meter right now. Oh, are we now arguing about how accurate the tomato meter is? No, no. But what I'm saying is, is there's groups of other people who do a similar thing like this. And, um, you know, they actually other have it right about there. are assholes and 
idiots, which is why we're reviewing this movie and not other people. <laughs> right, because we are neither of those things. We have hot takes. <laughs> and hot bods. And hot bods. We all have and we're all very different white 30-year-olds. <laughs> hey. We're 29-year-olds. I'm mixed. All I'm saying is uh, <laughs> if you want a, a gross-out, no gory movie, this ain't it. pick something else because this ain't it. And if you want to waste it. 90 minutes for like an I- interesting thought idea about what you could do by sewing humans together where they eventually die of bacterial infections, then maybe check this out. If you are this a medical student or a student of cinema... This will piss you, you off. You know, you need to no. watch this for the cinematography and just for like the sheer genius. Like, okay, this is a film about teamwork. This is a film... This is like a Christian science study. Okay? I agree with that. I, no, no. I'd say Expand on that. Well, they'll, they'll, they're pre- aren't they praying the whole time? Expand on that. They're like on their hands and knees. They're praying mm-hmm. to get like you know the be- like they don't believe in yeah, surgery. Yeah, no. When I'm on my hands and knees, I'm definitely praying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm saying, oh God, oh God, oh God. Yeah, I know, I know. Unfortunately, these three didn't get the rug burns that you would because they had because they had pads no knees. On. They had yeah, knees. they had no patellas, but they had knee pads. <laughs> the doc- Doctor uh, Hyder was very considerate in that fact. He, he was not. Let's set this straight. He was not a mean man. He's a nice misunderstood, perhaps demented. Sure, but he wasn't malicious. He created the- this with the intention to love it. He's a fucking damn sight better than. Dr. Frankenstein, who just abandons his creature. True, that's you know what I mean. That's fucked up. This he had like scruples, okay. And I don't think you could say that. No, he had scalpels. I don't know about scruples. Oh, okay. Why didn't they just kill him with the fucking scalpel? Agreed. That because it's a horror movie. You, well, you yeah. never kill the bad guy. You barely injure them and and then try to get away. How yeah. good was him just like dragging his body through the whole house oh after only be, he got stabbed one time in the thigh yeah. and his entire he was paralyzed from the waist down. No, he, the he got artery he was bleeding he, out. Uh, he got stabbed in the top of the foot and then like the shin. That's right. But then he also got his fucking neck bit. He did and get his, his neck and he got bit. a piece of his neck bit off. Yeah. 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 That shit hurts. I can tell you from experience that shit hurts. That shit hurts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, yeah. I mean, Wanna that's the human up? centipede. Um, yeah. Are we? What are we watching next? We're week? taking a week off, I believe. Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah. I I will be out of town. Um, so we're gonna take at least a week off. I I plan to be back for the following week for another movie, which I think is Michael's pick. Yes, I will be hosting and providing us with sustenance and a, you know, I'm gonna class it up because we're coming off of the heels of Human Centipede. Prior to that. It was Van Helsing. We have dove deep into some obscure cult films. We have explored some of the lesser seen classics. But I think it's time to deliver the goods. I think it's time to put some fucking f- like real bait on this hook. Mm-hmm. So to satiate all the Elmers out there, we're going to, and I don't say this in like hyperbole, we're actually going to visit a classic that we've all seen. Mm-hmm. And I think we're all, f- we think highly of this film. We we have fond memories of this film. And if nothing else, it is widely regarded as a top example in the genre. I'm almost there. We are going to watch Toby Hooper's 1972 yes. Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Okay. Good. Fuck yes. Because that shit deserves a podcast. And that is something we can sink our teeth into. I cannot wait to talk about it. I've been it's, waiting for this. It's been a little while since I've seen it, Same. actually. It's been um, a long while for me. I love this movie. I would say it probably is, on any given day, my favorite horror movie of all time. It is just a perfect example of the genre, or at least in my memory. And it's probably been maybe even 10 years since I've seen the original. And I'm looking forward to it. And I... I just think that it's going to give us a lot of opportunity for banter. And um, if any of the Elmers out there haven't seen this, please seek it out if you should happen to want to. And uh, come prepared because yeah. we're going to have a lot to talk about on this film. And if you've never seen it, it, w- it would do you some sort of favor to have a little bit of reference of what we're going to get into. It's You're in for a treat. It's worth Fantastic watching. Fantastic For movie. sure. Yeah. Um, no, no. I, I think the last time I saw it, it was required watching for Texas History in junior high. And that no was the shit? last time. No, of course not. And, <laughs> and that was the last time that I saw it. No, no, pro- probably like high school was probably. Rob didn't when, really? when, junior high. When I, 
Uh, I went to a private school. Yeah. I probably you know have what that means. Where the, where, the te- where, the, where the students teach the teachers. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Anyway, on behalf of all of us here at 13th and L, we would just like to say, if you tuned in tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Watch two fans. Come on, watch two fans.